Well, with Putin's speech, and and he said what was formerly known as Ukraine, do you believe that they're now going to just push up to the Polish border and, and just... No, no. I do believe that, you know, Putin's a very cagey guy. And again, he's one of these uh, leaders that um, I like because he doesn't waste words, okay? Um, you know, we have a lot of politicians that go out there and just speak all the time to hear them talk. And what happens is when you speak all the time just to hear yourselves talk, sometimes things change and you have to backtrack on your words. When was the last time Putin backtracked on his words? Putin's only done it once that I'm aware of <clears throat> when he apologized to the mothers of fallen Russian soldiers. And he, he met with them and he apologized. He said, in 2014, they offered me, uh, you know, we could have destroyed the Ukrainian army. I had them surrounded have destroyed them. But the French, the Germans came to me and said, please, please, please choose peace, choose peace. And they offered the, um, the, the, the Minsk Accords. And so Putin went along, he chose peace. And so from 2014 till 2021, this uh, peace that he chose resulted in thousands of dead Ukrainians, many of them Russian Ukrainians, people he's supposed to protect. And they're dying because the Ukrainians never chose peace. Um, so he, uh, you know, he apologized. He said, I should never have done that. I should have finished the job then. And I, res I regret not making that decision ever since. Understand what he just said, that the West lied to him. He believed their lies. He chose peace and it was a mistake. He will never believe in the West again. Um, he will also finish this job. And that's an important thing to understand. He will finish this job. And the way they're going to finish this job now, here, back in February, he gave a speech uh, where he talked about the mission being the consolidation of Russian control over the four territories, Kherson, Zaporizhia, Donetsk, and Lugansk, uh, and the continued economic and social development of Crimea. Uh, that's his priority. So the implication was that should Ukraine choose peace, that's the limit of the Russian advance. Everything else will be Ukraine. But now we have people of influence near Putin saying right off the bat that, um, because Ukraine's going, well, we can't sit at the negotiating table with that there. The guy said, well, that's not, that's not going to be there. What's going to be there now is you have to give us Odessa. You have to give us Kharkov. You have to give us Nikolaev. You have to give us Nepotrov. You might have to give us Sumy. Basically, another 30% of Ukraine. You got to give us. Non-negotiable give it or we take it. Either way, it's ours. Russian majority population there. You guys have proven yourselves to be Nazi scum sucking pigs who hate Russians. Therefore, we will never allow you to govern over Russians. So we're taking all the Russian territory. But that, even then, Ukraine could theoretically exist as a rump state. It would be called a nation. But Putin doesn't talk about that as a nation anymore. He calls it as territories. Um, and he has implied that um, Whatever is governing Ukraine today will not be allowed to exist in Ukraine. And whatever Ukraine is going to be is going to be a destroyed nation that Russia will not have the responsibility of taking care of. So he's going to take the Russian territories and Russia will develop these territories and make them modern. Everything else is going to be destroyed and left for the West. It's the West's problem. And that's the future of Ukraine. And it's a tragedy. But wouldn't that open up the doors for the United States and NATO to uh, fill that part of what's left of Ukraine with weapons <clears throat> to throw in Russia again? No, because Russia will just destroy them. Um, look, what, however this war ends, there will be there, there are certain guarantees that anything that's left of the territory we now call Ukraine will have to sign a binding uh, legal agreement that it will be neutral in perpetuity uh, meaning it will never jo join NATO and will never allow uh, NATO forces to be on its soil or European forces or any foreign powers to be on their soil. It will be this barren piece of land with no, no, um, no foreign uh, military uh, influence. And so with that treaty, um, the government can't enter into a, rela a negotiated relationship with another power and say, hey, come on in here and help us out. Russia would intervene militarily. 
that point in time um, because they'd call that an invasion. And it would have to be an invasion because the government is denied the opportunity by law to ask foreign countries. And so it would be an imposition. And NATO is not in the business in Europe of invading. Well, wait a minute. They invaded Kosovo. I'm sorry. NATO is in the business of invading other nations, but they're not going to invade a nation protected by Russia. That's for sure. So it doesn't open anything up. What Russia does have to do, though, is um, while they may not physically have to go to Poland, um, and this is this is where it gets hard because sometimes I say this with a smile because I'm trying to be lighthearted because as I told you, if I don't joke about it, I'm going to break down in tears. Um, when when they talk about the destruction of Ukraine, they're talking about the destruction of Ukraine. Um, the Western Ukraine right now is going to be destroyed. Um, that's real because the only way you can drive the Nazis out is to inflict so much pain on the population of Western Ukraine that they have no choice but to flee. And unfortunately, that means that because almost all of Western Ukraine are Nazis, that we're going to be talking about 10 million refugees. going. Now, they're going to be welcome here in the United States. Why do I know that? Because 60 miles away from where I live in Ellenville, New York, the Nazis have a park, Heroes Park, and they have a statue of Stepan Bandera and Shoshkovich and other Nazis, murderous thugs, the worst vile people in the world. And it's right here in America, Heroes Park. And they have a celebration every summer where the little Nazis come out in their brown uniforms and they wear their nice little Nazi ties and they have their Nazi torches and they hold up their Nazi portraits and they sing their Nazi songs. So they're going to welcome these guys in. Canada certainly loves Nazis, so much so that their deputy prime minister is a Nazi, Christia Freeland. She's a Nazi. All of the Ukrainians in Canada are Nazis or Nazi sympathizers. So they'll go there. Australia likes Nazis, so they'll let them go there. So these 10 million people will be dispersed around the world. Well, they'll live in diaspora, but they won't be allowed to live on the soil of what is currently called Ukraine. Uh, Poland has dreams of moving into Western Ukraine and taking it over. Isn't going to happen because Russia is not going to allow a situation to exist where you have a quasi-independent entity that's uh, vehemently anti-Russian, uh, where resistance can grow. Uh, so Russia is going to create the conditions in which that can't exist. And this doesn't make me happy because this is going to be horrible for the people of Ukraine. But they've made a choice. They've opted to support evil. And when you support evil, you pay a heavy price. Well, in close.